Welcome to the Power of Love show sponsored by the Dee Dee Jackson Foundation, where we shine a light on loss and grief and how it impacts our lives. We are here to provide hope, resources, and a community so no one feels alone in their grief. Enjoy the show. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to the Power of Love show sponsored by the Dee Dee Jackson Foundation. My name is T.J. Jackson, and with me is my eldest brother, Taj Jackson. What's going on, T? What is going on, big bro? Nothing much. Nothing much. Excited about you know, today's show. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a great one. But Taj, first a couple of things. Don't get too excited, man. Too excited. Um, it's a beautiful day outside. I don't know if you've been. I went on a two-mile walk. Haven't done that in a while um, because of life. But the weather called me out there, and it's a beautiful day. Now, for those who are just watching or just listening for the first time, Taj doesn't like to move so much. Uh, no. he, he he made a – I'm not going to even say the claim he made, but he just doesn't like to move. So I'm trying to inspire my big bro to get moving because it's super important as we age. But, uh, Taj, what's your reasoning for not moving? Are, are you Have you gotten better? And then I'll do the proper intro. I don't think I've gotten better better i've just been because i have kids i've been forced to move more in that way like so we we just went um i know we're gonna talk about our week anyway but so but yeah i've been forced to move more and i'll talk i'll i'll, I'll leave it at that suspense wise all right well uh for those of you who are watching again or listening welcome to the power of love show uh we do this every week on wednesday at 1 p.m pacific standard time the whole goal of the show and the entire foundation is just to inspire you all to get through whatever it is you are going through. Uh, we try to encourage you. We try to give you hope. We try to give you love, some light, some some warmth. That is the entire purpose of this show. So with that said, of course, um, we're going to make some mistakes. We may be some late sometimes. We may be saying the wrong things. But the one thing I want to say is that we are not licensed therapists. We are just ordinary people who've experienced loss in our lives. We've been impacted by it. And we have learned from it. And what we like to do here is share our opinions in an attempt to help you get through whatever it is you may be going through. But with that said, if you need professional help, please, please go find it. Go seek it. Do not just rely on us. Very, very important. Um, now, for those of you who are watching again or listening, I know it's my third time saying that. I don't know why I'm saying it so much. Um, but first of all, thank you very much. As you all know, we are live on Facebook and YouTube, but if you're listening to us, we encourage you to maybe pause the show, um, give a good review so that anyone who may be looking for this type of content can find it. Yes, with all these social media and you know DSP, digital streaming platforms, they like to go by algorithms. And the way you could feed the algorithm is by liking and writing comments and positive reviews and sharing content. So that is the best way to help support the Power of Love show is simply by sharing it, liking it. And um, that way we can help those who really need this information get through their day. Uh, Todd, I think I said everything I usually say, say in the intro. I kind of winged it a bit more. But uh, yeah, it, is there yeah. is there anything else I am missing? No. You okay. covered everything. I, I, I made sure of it. Okay. The only other thing I do want to say is that we talked about this a bit on the last show is the importance of feeling part of a community. I just mm -hmm. want to give a little more light to our, our, our DD Jackson Facebook group. Um, that is something you can join today. Um, and there's hundreds and hundreds of people in there that are there going through situations that could be similar to yours. They're there to help support you because one of our biggest motifs our theme as a foundation is that we do not want you to suffer through any difficult times, any grief alone. Pain and, and suffering can really feel isolating. And that is such an important thing for us as someone who has lost their mother at a young age. I can only, 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 only suggest and hope you all find a community to, to, to help you get through your difficult moments. Um, Paj, I also do, I know we're already four and a half minutes into this intro, but real quickly, was there anything exciting that happened in your last week? I, I doubt it. Well, I look at <laughs> I'm preparing <laughs> a birthday party, most... so that's, that's okay. always, you know, 
uh, chaotic in that way. Well, I'm not, I shouldn't say I'm, I'm assisting my wife on in yeah. the birthday yeah. uh, thing. I and think that everyone, way, but still yeah. assisting for me is, is interesting. But besides that, we went to um, yesterday, cause you talked about moving. We yeah. went to, uh, oh gosh, I don't even know what garden. We went to the, some garden place like in, and, and it felt like I for miles. So uh, you'd be very proud of that aspect yeah. of it. Um, in LA, LA County. Yeah. In LA, it was in um, Glendale's area oh, or not Glend. Uh, yeah. Pasadena? Yeah. It was off the two. Glendale. Okay. Well, yeah. either way, I, I'm just proud of you for moving in. It's it's, beautiful. It's, it was just yesterday. I can't even remember the name of the garden. That's, okay. that's how bad my right now <laughs> with everything going on. <laughs> Uh, you know what's so funny and then uh, nothing happened in my week so i'll just say this but um i always worry you know uh, alzheimer's runs really yeah. heavy and big on my mom's side of the family and i like my brother's showing right now i have a not the best memory and i'll forget things that happened a week ago two weeks ago i do vlogging so that actually helps rejog some things that happened in my life pictures i'm doing picture books um that helps as well but I'm sharing all this because uh, it's comforting to watch you struggle through your your times because now I'm starting to think it was just because I was so busy with my kids and yeah. so busy in life that I forgot, you know, things can't penetrate as deeply, I guess, when, when oh, so yeah. much is going on. So maybe that is more attributed to why my memory has been so bad um, and not Alzheimer's. And they say, you don't really have to worry until you forget the way home or you forget, you know, someone's important birth date or phone number. And so far with that, I'm great. Uh, and knock on wood, I'll always be fine with that. But in terms of what I ate yesterday, or no, I can remember that. But you know what I mean? In terms of <laughs> what I did, what a movie was about, I do not remember oftentimes. You have selective memory. That's I think that's the thing. Yeah. I could probably go back a little and you would remember certain things. But 100%, I, um, that is a worry that because it does run in mom's family side yeah. of the family that I've, we always worry about the memory aspect of it. Well, enough about us, Taj. We have an incredible special guest that you mentioned yes. at the top of the show. Um, on today's episode of the Power of Love show, we welcome Angela, Angie Hansen. Um, Angela, I hope I said your name right. I know you go by Angie, but correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but anyways, to everyone out there, Angie shares her story of immense loss, a journey marked by the deaths of her one-year-old son, Garrett, her husband, Jack, her brother, Seth, and her sister-in-law, Brooke. In her own profound grief, Angie found solace in a mission to change the narrative around grief, to bring light into the darkest moments, and to offer genuine support to those walking the path of loss. Yeah. She founded Butterflies and Halos in 2022, a greeting card company that seeks to bridge the gap between sympathy and understanding, between condolence and companionship. This greeting card company helps create a space for the griever so they feel less alone and show up in intentionally for a friend and also help you as a friend send hope into your grieving friend heart and home. These cars aren't here to fix the grief, but to show you care and you are sharing in the grief journey with your friend. Mm -hmm. Now, Angie's also an author. Her first book, Chapters of a Resilient Heart, is set to be published next month, May 2024. She also co-hosts the From Lost to Light podcast, touching on all aspects of loss and how people have found their light. Here today, ladies and gentlemen, to share more about her powerful story and impactful work. Without further ado, please welcome Angela Angie Hansen to the Power of Love show. Angie! Hi! <laughs> it's so funny because now that we've added that audio clap, <laughs> You're like a game show host. <laughs> I was like waiting for my cue to start. Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> Wait for it to die down. Yeah. Oh, Eddie. Uh, this is the fun thing about doing a podcast with your brother. Now, uh, I know you have a podcast. We're going to talk about that later. But first of all, I want to make sure. Did I say your full name? I said it right. Angela? You did. Yes. It is. I've never. 
it's Angela. <laughs> I've never seen it spelled that way. I know. Thank. I, I always tell my mom that because a lot of people say Angela or Angela, but yeah. you can just call me Angie. It's all good that way. You know what though? I, I like it. It's it's, mm -hmm. it's cool. So yeah. so everyone who's watching on Facebook or YouTube, you can see how it was spelled. And it's it's Angela. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah that's it's what Angela. It's, it's Angela. Uh, but anyways, welcome to the show. Um, we have a good time here and talking about really challenging and difficult situations that we've been through. Um, so the the first thing I I, I want to say is thank you for doing what you're doing. Um, you know, every single day someone is experiencing a, a severe life changing um, event in their life, and and you know we don't prepare for those events necessarily. So for people like you and even us, um, it, it can go a long way when you could talk about it and help people kind of see the light or see that they can still reclaim their life. So first and foremost, on behalf of my brother and our entire foundation, thank you for stepping out and, and doing that. Yeah. Um, now, can you share how your personal journey with grief began and what inspired you to do exactly what I was just saying, open up about your experience publicly? Well, yeah, um, I won't get into all the crazy details because it takes a long time, but um, uh, we lost our son Garrett in 2006. He was one years old. And he died in a sleep at um, the daycare provider's house. And um, what we had learned afterwards is that Garrett, he died, he had a heart defect that we didn't know he had. And so it was, um, you know, it was very sudden. And that was what catapulted us into this, what for me, really, the um, grief journey that I've been on. And so, you know, we have our daughter, Gracie, she was four at the time her brother died. So our biggest thing was um, just trying to, you know, navigate that whole grief journey with her and how to help a child along in the, uh, why we ourselves are completely broken. Um, and, you know, I think we did a pretty okay job. And um, when we got to about a year into, um, grieving our son and losing him after we passed the one year anniversary. Um, my husband, Jack was diagnosed with cancer and he was diagno mm. diagnosed with ocular melanoma. And so he basically, he had a large tumor in his eye and it had spread. He was diagnosed um, stage four. And so it spread to his brain and his liver and his spleen. And, you know, they, they told us that he would, you know, he would die from this. Um, we didn't know how long. And so we just really, at that moment in time, um, I, my journey with grief just kind of for my son kind of just got put on the back burner because I was really trying to just help my husband, you know, cause we were in the fight for his life and he uh, he went through radiation and chemo and he we battled that and he battled it for 16 months and so he lost his um battle with cancer on february february 8 2009 so about two and a half months after our son had died and you know then at that moment my daughter was then six years old by then and you know, we just really, I, I didn't know, I, you know, I started grieving Jack, uh, the day he was diagnosed. So I, I was prepared in a sense, um, you know, of what my grief journey was going to look like, but I wasn't prepared, you know, honestly, I wasn't prepared for the loneliness and, um, just all the unanswered things that didn't get done. And, um, you know, but we just, we moved forward. I had the support of amazing friends and family. And then about a month after my husband had died, uh, my brother, Seth, had been battling a brain tumor for about five years. And um, he started having some issues with um, his brain tumor. And on March 13th of 2009, he had um, his third brain surgery to remove his brain tumor. And, um, you know, each time he, he 
his first two surgeries, he really um, bounced back, you know, fairly quickly. He was very healthy, very strong guy. And this time it just, it proved to be different. And, you know, I'll note that the first two times um, he never had to do any chemo or radiation for his um, tumors. Um, it was graded very low, so he didn't have to, you know, and that was fortunate. And then this time, um, it came back and it was graded quite a bit higher. So he was going to have to do that. Well, he never really recovered from his surgery and the tumor just came back with a vengeance. And my brother ended up losing his battle with his cancer on April 7th, 2009. So just two months mm. after my husband had died. So mm. at that moment in time, you know, um, you know, in between there, then my daughter, Gracie, she had turned, um, seven years old and I honestly, that's when I kind of lost all my hope. I lost my hope and my faith and I was mad. I was pissed. I was everything, you know, and I just really didn't know what to do. And, um, you know, I just knew every day that I had to get up because my daughter was sitting here and she deserved to have a beautiful life. You know, she deserved to live. She deserved to have a mommy that was there and present. And, um, she was my saving grace really in all of it. And I, I, you know, I thank God for that. And so, you know, and then with my sister-in-law, her death came, this is my first husband, Jack, his sister. Um, she, her death came later on about nine years. She died in June of 2018 and she died from alcoholism. And so she died, um, because she didn't know how to cope and she didn't know mm. how to heal from the losses. And so her, her journey, her and her choice, you know, like I said, my choice was to live and to find a meaning in life and to do that. And uh, my sister-in-law, Brooke, um, didn't know how to do that. And she chose alcohol. And mm. fortunately, you know, she did lose her life due to alcoholism. So, you know, and what that did is it, it left her parents without any living children. Um, and, you know, it's just, it was just very traumatic. And it left me with having to, you know, tell my daughter then, you know, she's about 16 at this time you know, how, here we go again, you know, and, um, but yeah, that's kind of my journey into losses. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a lot of losses. Um, you know, obviously more than most have to go through, especially, you know, as, as young mother, wife, um, sister, uh, it's, it's difficult to even hear. I can only imagine how tough it was for you to go through. Um, but I, again, applaud you and thank you for sharing your story. There's several in our communities that are dealing with similar losses that what you had to go through. So for them to hear from you, I know helps just let them know that there is a, a way forward. Um, my, my question to you, my first question is, Angie, what would you tell either that person who may have lost just a child or what would you tell your yourself, you know, when it first happened? What, what would you say now that years has passed, um, whether it's advice, whether it's do this, don't do this, what would you tell someone who would, is this is a new experience to, and they just don't know how to cope? Well, looking back at it now, um, I definitely, um, you know, I just, I always say, you know, give yourself grace, obviously, um, because this is something that no parent should ever have to do is bury their child um, or say goodbye to their child of any age. And you have to give yourself grace um, in understanding. And, um, you know, just you have to be where you're be where you're at and be with your feelings. And um, I I sometimes don't know how I, hmm. how I made it through that part. You know, I honestly don't, I started journaling a lot and this is where my book, you know, kind of transpired from, but that was my coping skill was to journal right after my son had died. And for me to be able to journal, um, 
I would be able to look at my journal entries six months after they, you know, my son had died and I'd be like, wow, those, you know, those are kind of some scary thoughts. You know, those are scary, those are scary words. And then, you know, a year later I was able to say, Angie, wow, you've done a really good job and you've really come a long ways, you know? And so I always do just say, you know, you have to lean in and accept the help from people. Um, you know, there's people out there, you have to find your community, kind of like you said, with your community mm -hmm. that you have, you have to find the community, because they are the ones that are going to be closest to you. And they're going to be the ones that help guide you through, you know, those tough times. Who would you say was your community? Um, at first, I would say it was my, um, my, it was my husband, Jack, at the time when our son had died. And then we had some very close friends that were there. And then I found a group that was all moms that had lost a child, whether the child was one, like my son Garrett, or if the child was 21, you know, um, and all losses, different losses. But we did um, Bible studies. And I wouldn't say I was, um, I was, we, we didn't even have a church at the time when my son had died. We, you know, I, I believed I had faith, but we weren't, you know, practicing Christians or anything. And so I was really kind of thrown into this and I was, I was very nervous and scared, but what I received out of that is really what really started me on my journey. It really did because I started to understand more about dying and death mm. and grief and what, what we are guaranteed, you know, cause we're, we, we, we're all going to be guaranteed suffering. That's a given right in life We're that's the way it is, but it's how we look at our suffering. And if we believe that there is something bigger and that's carrying us, mm. I believe that, you know, we have to lean into that. And that's what I learned from this group of ladies. And I, I still talk to them today and they were, that was, like I said, in 2006 after Garrett had died. Yeah. I, I, I can relate to that because, you know, when, when my mother was murdered, I uh, lost a lot of hope, lost a lot of sense of purpose, lost just a lot of everything. <laughs> and it wasn't until I learned more about loss and, and the death process and, and, starting you know leaning into faith more that i was able to kind of right the ship obviously as we always say our family and friends played a big role um and the community we had but for me it was reading some books and and just diving in and and learning about the process more helped a lot you know so um thank you for that answer yeah taj uh anything yeah, I, I always have a tendency, Angie, to kind of hog the mic. So I, I got to make sure my, my brother, if he wants to ask anything, anything you want to say? Right now, my air conditioning is on. So that's why it's on mute. <laughs> and I'm trying to um, turn off this air. It's well, we can't hear it. So if you. Oh, you can't. Oh, okay. Then, yeah. then I will not do that. Um, uh, <laughs> I, you know, first of all, I, I just, I commend your strength just hearing. I, I get, TJ knows this. Um, I go in not knowing anything about the guest at all in that way. I prefer to do that, to be kind of the audience's eyes and ears. And just hearing your story and your strength was been so, you know, remarkable. But um, that, that aspect of it in that way. But as you said, you know, you wanted to provide for your daughter and make sure she had, you know, this the, the life that she deserved in that way. And I, I just commend you for that strength and bouncing back, you know, questioning, as you said, you had at points question the faith, your faith and all that stuff. And it's that journey. And it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's your honesty that I know that resonates with our community. I've been reading a lot of the comments in that way. So, you know, mm -hmm. I just want to say thank you for being here and, and being so open. Thanks. Thank you. So, um, Angie, you go ahead and you start uh, a company called Butterflies and Halos. And yep. I, am I saying the name right? Because it's it's really butterflies plus sign halos. Yes. Right. But yeah. Butterflies and halos. Correct. Yes. So okay. so like the butterflies. Um, that was my symbol from my son Garrett was a butterfly, and 
you know, and actually like a butterfly, the whole, um, you know, the whole, how they morph into, you know, it's a spiritual rebirth, you know, transformation. And then the halos obviously represent all my people. So, yeah. yes. So uh, we do this show for many reasons, but one of the main goals of the show is to, to make talking about grief and loss um, more out there, I guess, just to, to not, it seems like such a taboo topic. Seems like it's getting better over the years, but at least, you know, in the late or the mid nineties when we lost our mother, and I'm sure you can relate when you lost, um, you know, the three in secession um, back then there wasn't so much, the internet wasn't really around. So it could really, really feel isolating and you didn't know what to do. And, and I think the, the mental health um, discussion wasn't as prevalent. So you, you had this idea that you're supposed to just soldier on and, and, and tough it out or, or whatever. Um, but what I'm trying to say is our, one of our goals for the show is to, to bring grief talk out up in the open. Is that something similar for you with butterflies and halo? Yes. Um, okay. So, and you're doing it through greeting cards, correct? Correct. Okay. So two questions. How did you come up with the idea for greeting cards and what has that journey been like for you? Well, um, it's been, it's been fun. I will say what, what transpired was, is I was like, how do we change the narrative around grief and how do we show up for our friends when they are grieving, when they lose a spouse or they lose a child or they lose, you know, a mom or a dad or whoever they lose, um, how do we show up for them without trying to fix them? You know, and I was just tired of going to the stores and seeing cards that were sympathy cards mm -hmm. that said with deepest sympathy, I'm so sorry for your loss. As well intended as those are, if my best friend lost her husband, you know, I'm not going to give her a card that says with deepest sympathy. I mean, that's not how we talk to each other. So I'm like, yeah. why can't we just talk about it? Why can't we just say how we really feel? And so I'm like, I know what to say because I've experienced hmm. every, you know, I've experienced a lot of grief. So, you know, and different griefs. And so, um, you know, I was, so I was just talking. So I am remarried now, my husband Chance, and I was talking to him and I was saying, why can't I just say this? So the very first card I came up with was, I don't know what to say. Let's go eat one of those damn casseroles. Okay. So <laughs> I would give that to my friend, right? Um, because we don't know what to say when someone is grieving, you know, and um, I just, I like, I like to bring light and laughter to mm. a situation and I want to be honest. And so I was just like, let's do it. So I started making cards. I have about 150 cards currently and um, I sell them, you know, on Etsy and I go to pop-ups and really I want like, there was a quote that I had found and I have it written down here so I don't botch it, but it says grief lasts longer than sympathy, which is one of the tragedies of the grieving. And it's by Elizabeth McCracken. Mm. And so how do we continue to show up for our friends? Not just for this first two weeks after someone has died, but the, the weeks, the months and the years, you know, let's, let's continue. You like, if you could get in the habit of sending your friend or somebody a greeting card, um, that has just a wonderful message. That's kind of like snarky even once a month. I mean, how amazing. And mm. if you're having a crappy day, if they are having a crappy day, if they went to their mailbox and they received that unexpectedly, I mean, you're going to change their, their whole day. They're going to smile and they're going to be like, okay, I've got this, right? I've got this. I, I can do this because she believes in me. You know, my friend believes in me. This person believes in me. And um, I just really believe in the power of what the, what the receiver will get from receiving a card. Very, very true. Mm -hmm. Very powerful. Um, when you're going through those lonely times for anyone who has an experience, at least this was my experience. Um, one simple gesture or thing can really change the trajectory of your whole day. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes it's, it's a phrase, a card, something like that. So 
I completely agree and, and love it. And I never heard that quote. It's a great quote. Yeah. Um, who, what is it one more time? It says it's grief lasts longer than sympathy, which is one of the tragedies of the grieving by Elizabeth McCracken. So and true. I believe, you know, um, it's what I am trying to do is people show up for about two mm -hmm. weeks and then they mm -hmm. start dwindling off after someone dies, you know, and, they just get on with their life. And, you know, we're still, we're still stuck. We're still trying to figure out how to even take one step forward. Right. And so I think that's, I, I kind of talked about this. It's actually ironic today. Um, I'll tell this story a little quickly. Um, there's a greeting card association and you can submit cards for, it's like, um, it's, it's like the Louis awards and it's like the Oscars for stationary cards. So they have a section for sympathy cards, right? So I submitted them, my cards for the very first time today. And, or it was actually last year. I didn't, none of my cards got picked. I submitted like five cards, which it's fine. You know, it was my first time. It's, I understand that, you know, there's so many beautiful cards and wonderful cards out there, but I read the feedback from one of the cards just today and it goes and this is one of the things about the whole journey of grief is um, the person said that they felt uncomfortable reading my words and a couple of, I'm just like, what, what do you mean you're uncomfortable? You're uncomfortable reading like grief cards. So I believe I call my cards grief cards. I don't call them sympathy cards. You know, they need to have a section for grief cards. And then there's a section for sympathy. Sympathy is, okay, I'm so sorry for your loss. Sympathy is, um, okay. But then sympathy goes away, just like that quote, mm -hmm. you know, grief lasts longer. And so that's why I'm like, these cards, like, I'm sorry you're uncomfortable with reading my words. And it's one of them was the one I just told you about. I don't know what to say. Let's go eat one of those damn casseroles. Like, <laughs> I mean, what's uncomfortable about that? Like, or mm. there, I submitted one about, um, you know, no parent should have to bury a child. I am standing with you and I'm with, you know, and what's, what's that made you uncomfortable and how as a society, can we stop the stigma of, you know, yeah. grief? Let's change it. Yeah. Uh, so, I, well, I, applaud what you're doing uh, we just for anyone who's watching the stream on facebook or youtube we just put up an, an overlay is the technical term of uh, some of the cards that angie's doing with her butterflies and halos um it's available on etsy and at butterfliesandhalos.com that is spelled for anyone who's listening uh that is spelled as you would think it's spelled butterfliesandhalos.com B U two T S E R F L I E S A N D H A L O S dot com butterflies and halos dot com. Uh, the quote says cards that speak hope into the griever heart and the in between. Uh, I, I just, I commend you again. And I think it's such a great and honest truth that, you know, we do tend to go on with our life. And, and I think that's kind of, um, maybe that's something the way we're built, but they're, those who are going through loss and grieving, they are suffering or struggling through their grief for a lot longer than a couple of weeks, a couple of months, or even a couple of years. So something like cards, like Angie's doing, um, can bring a lot of support to that person when they're not expecting it. And like Angie said, that can go a long way. And, and change their day or even week. So um, make sure you all take a look and 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 do something like that. Write a handwritten card to someone, a friend that may have lost their life, or a friend that may have lost a loved one's life. Um, I think it can really change their path and also really just be a big impact in their life. Um, so thank you for that. Now, uh, what advice would you give, and you may have touched on this, Angie, but what advice would you give to someone who wants to be um, a supporting friend? Like, was there anything, let me say it this way, because I'm guilty of this. I think I'm getting better with years and with the information I've been getting from everyone. But 
when a friend would lose a parent or a significant other, I would become speechless and not know what to say or do. Um, I think family is in a different position because it's family and you're there and you, you usually, if someone, you lose someone, that person was really close to you as well. So you're in a similar boat. But my question to you is as a friend, is there anything that someone did for you or is there any advice you'd have for someone to console someone as a friend? Well, I, I always say, let's just, um, you know, meet them where they're at. You know, don't, don't try to be, um, 10 steps ahead of them. And that comes in where you have those friends that want to fix everything for you. Right. They want, cause you but and it can't be fixed. Nothing can be fixed. And so meet your friend where they're at, sit with them, sit with them in their space. You know, you have to hold space for them in your heart because that's the only way you're going to be able to listen to them and guide them. Because if you're, if you're just in your mind, just like, okay, how, how can I help them? How can I do this? How, what, what do I got to do? You know, if you're just going in circles, you have to hold that space in their heart to be your heart, to be able to listen to them and let them talk about their person, you know? And if they talk, if they tell you the same story five times in five days, so what, you know, I mean, they, they just need to, they just need a listening hand and, or ear, I guess. And so I always just say, meet your friend where they're at and just listen to them. So very good advice. Uh, Taj, do you want to say something? No, uh, I see your I hand go up. Well, no, I, it's very good advice. And I, I think, yeah, definitely. I loved how you said thing. Um, it can't be fixed because um, there's a lot of people that think that, you know, it, there's a solution out there to deal with grief in, in that way. And there's a right and wrong way. And so, as you said, so I was just commenting on that. Angie, uh, in addition to butterflies in Halo, you're also an author. Yeah. Uh, very, very, very cool. So can you give us a little glimpse um, about your upcoming book, Chapters of a Resilient Heart? Um, and then I am also would love to know what prompted you to write it. And what is your hope that readers uh, take away from it? Well, um, yes, this was a labor of tears and love. And my um, book is not a, um, it's not a self-help book. It is my story and it is my daughter's story. And it's a story of all the people that have lived and died. And I just felt it very important that these amazing people that I was honored to be a part of and live my life with, um, their stories of how they lived needed to be shared. So my book is broken down into sections of all my people. And I talk about their lives, who they were, what they did. I share their stories of their deaths. I mean, I get down to the nitty gritty of um, how they died, the feelings that we were all feeling. And then I talk about how we survived in their sections, like what we did to honor them and how we continue to honor them. And then there's a chapter of resilience. There's a chapter of hope. There's a chapter of dating and remarrying. There's a chapter Mm. of coping through the holidays. And like I said, this is not a, a book that's telling you what to do or how you should do it or giving you guide points. It's my story and my journey. And my hope is, is that through reading this book that you'll see my resilience and hopefully that'll help you emerge, you know, from, from something yourself and you can find the resilience and hope in your heart as well. Yeah. I love the cover, by the way. Thank you. Uh, I really do. Uh, (laughs) Did you design that? Um, I, well, no, the, my publishing company, Blue Hat Publishing Company, um, Rachel designed it. I, it was kind of, cool. I had an idea that I wanted a heart, obviously. Um, and I always wanted chapters in my, yeah. um, I don't have chapters in my book. I have sections mm-hmm. of my people, but I don't have chapters. You're not going to find chapter one, two, three, but I wanted chapters because that is what my whole life has been. It's yeah. been. It's been chapters here and there, you know, I've, I, I, you know, that's where I'm at. I've lived and I've, I've 
buried people. I've done this chapter. I've done that chapter. Yeah. And so anyways, that is, yeah, with the help of that, I just knew that I wanted a heart and I love old books. So I was like, that's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, and I love the, the word chapters being in your title because yep. I think that's very real mm -hmm. that when you have those losses, it kind of does feel like chapters. And, you know, I think a lot of times people think they, they're going to reclaim the same life they had, but life changes and it does feel like a brand new chapter, brand new start. You're just bringing that other person and traits from that other person with mm -hmm. you along the way. Mm -hmm. um, one question I have yeah. uh, that just I thought of when hearing your last answer, you, to me, epitomize resilience and uh, a quiet strength. And... Um, I'm just curious to know, and I obviously can assume that it's not every day you're feeling this way or, or always felt that way, but for those out there who may be feeling like they're the opposite, just the, uh, the, the pillar of weakness right now, what advice would you give them or what would you tell them that helped you become the strong woman and strong mentality that you are? Well, um, yes, you are correct. Every day is different. Um, and it will be. And I, you know, I am about 18 years out from losing my son and 15 years out from losing my husband and my brother. And so, um, I honestly lean on my faith and, um, I, I have to believe that, um, that there is, there's better each day. There's going to be a better tomorrow for all of us, you know, and I have to believe that. And I, I'm not the strongest human in the world. Um, but I've been carried by something and someone, and I know who that is. And I believe that, you know, and so I just, I just feel that, um, sharing my story and sharing my people's stories and their lives, that that is what, and honoring them, is what strengthens me to be better every day and be the resilient person I am. Yeah. It's, it's I, I'm going to just highlight a, a quick, uh, Miss Silent Siren, the Tiffany. Oh. Uh, she says, this is the best hour of my week. Always learn so much from these brave warriors. It's, it's really true. Um, I was just thinking, uh, internally, of course, <laughs> like 10 minutes ago that, you know, I don't do any therapy. I don't do, uh, never did any therapy, but this doing this hour podcast is like my therapy. And I, I was thinking this, how, how much better I feel and more grounded I feel in life and inspired um, and, and just secure um, during this time. As much as I'd love to say my brother has something to do with, he really doesn't. It's all the guests <laughs> <laughs> like you. <Yeah>. Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> he knew that was coming. But um, really, it's, it's a, this is a, a, a really um, beautiful thing because people like you and us, we can share our thoughts and, and let people know that they're not alone. And, and again, I know we said this many times, but thank mm -hmm. you for being here and doing your part in it. Um, you. are you going to write another book? Um, well, I know wait, 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 real quick. <laughs> First of all, the book hasn't came out. You can yeah, pre-order it <laughs> next month. Yes. Uh, it, it comes out next month. You can pre-order it now. Correct. And to pre-order it, Angie, where do we go to pre-order it? Um, well, I have a Shopify link, so you can actually go to my website, butterfliesandhalos.com. Okay. And at the top of it, there's pre-order book. And it takes you right there to pre-order it. Okay. And they it's and then it will be released and published the end of May. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna still get back to that question because I, okay. I'm curious to know how that process was. But the second question I I had, can people internationally order pre-order the book? And because someone asked, can they pre-order the gr grief cards? Are you sending out internationally? Um I have sent to Canada. I have not sent out um, internationally yet. Um, that's okay. a whole different dynamic. So <laughs> yes, it is. I'm I'm always up for a challenge. So <laughs> I never say never. Um, my book is not international yet, um, but it will be on Amazon in, starting in June. So okay. then that will be people will be able to order then internationally. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, Taj is going to want to know, and I, I still want to know if you're going to write another book, but Taj is going to want to know, did you do uh, this way? Did you do an audible version or will you be doing an audible version? 
I, I, that isn't also in the works. I just actually was talking to my publishing company and like a shout out to blue hat publishing company. They have been a huge guide for me during this and they are out of Franklin, Tennessee, mm. but, um, we just talked about this and yes, I am going to do an audio version of my book and I'm thinking I'm going to just read it myself because I just think it's okay. more authentic and genuine. Um, oh, hundred percent. Yeah. Say, I don't, yeah. I'm not quite sure. I like it when people hire somebody to do it and yeah. whatever I, I'm going to be able to tell my story better than anybody else. Yes. yes. And I, I, yeah, you said the right word authentic as well. I think as someone that listens to audio books and stuff like that, um, I love hearing it from the original person as well. You, yeah. you just, you get, you feel connected in, in that way. And it's just, as you said, more authentic. Yeah. Yeah. So that'll probably be come out maybe probably a couple months after the release of the book. So that's, I'm, I am working on the, all the dynamics of that. Perfect. Okay. Now back to my question. <laughs> uh, do you see yourself writing more books in the future? Yes. And I actually would love to write a children's book. Cool. So that's kind of on my radar. So we'll see. Uh, just a, uh, any specific, is it still going to be grief related or not grief? Related? I think, it, I think it's going to be grief related, but okay, in a cool. happy, in a happy way, I guess if that makes sense. Yeah, mm -hmm. it does. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Very cool. Yes. Okay. So, so in addition to the grieving cards, in addition to you being an, an incredible author, you are also the host of a podcast from Lost to Light. Uh, how has that process been for you? And uh, what topics or is there any guests that have had the most impact on you personally that you've had? Yes. Well, yes, I am actually co-host. Um, mm -hmm. I co-host it with a fellow widow friend of mine, Michelle, and we had just decided that we wanted to do a podcast that was all losses, whether it was a divorce, a job loss, um, you know, identity, um, you know, any type of loss. So how did you find your light um, after you had your loss, whether it was an addiction and you overcame that addiction? Um, so we've had, I've, I've enjoyed it. Um, the technical aspects of all of it are really hard for me, but <laughs> um, technology is not always my friend, but we're, you know, we're working through that. We just released our 21st episode yesterday or no, nice. today, Wednesday, actually, um, we released bi-weekly nice. and, um, and like the one that we released today, uh, this Victoria Wolf is her name. Um, you know, she lost her business. And so her and her husband had this business and they lost it and they were completely lost in life and what they were supposed to do next. And, um, so she, it's amazing how she has found her light with art. Now she's mm. doing artwork and she's an artist and her story is just very unique and cool. And probably the other losses or the other guests that I've had are any of the lost parents that have had, a child die. And I, those just always hold a special place in my heart. And, yeah. um, I just really empathize with them because I understand. And so those guests are the ones that I just really resonate with the most. Yeah. Well, again, thank you for doing this. Yeah. Um, uh, from lost to light podcasts, everyone out there, um, make sure to go check it out. Give it a thumbs up. All the stuff I said earlier, listen yep. to an episode. And if you enjoy it, please yep. leave a, a good review. Um, it helps the algorithms uh, feed it to those who need it. So um, I, I, I'm very, like I said, just proud is the wrong word to use because it makes it seem like you're my child. Or, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I, you know, you, you did it. But I'm just very honored to, to, to be talking to you. For, uh, oh, someone you. who's went through what you went through, Angie, and 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 helping so many people in so many different ways is r really really commendable so um as someone in the grief space um and like i said on behalf of my brother just thank you for being you and and sharing your light and and sharing your wisdom and experiences with the world it 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 means the world to uh so many people out there and and i just very thankful so thank you well, I thank you guys as well, because what you're doing is also commendable. And um, I just I always say, you know, 
we are better together. You know, right. we are better together. And if we can do this and we can all, you know, pull forces together and um, create a community that can hold up all these grievers. I just, I think we're, you know, we're onto something. We're going to change the world with, you know, grief and their, the future grievers are going to have immense support. Yeah. Right? No doubt. So true. So, so true. Um, there's probably one more question I'm going to have, but I want to check in with my brother. Uh, Cause I, I, I didn't realize it's been almost an hour, Angie. I, <laughs> I, I hope you don't have anywhere to go. We no. started later. Okay. You're okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Todd, any questions for you before I ask my final question? No. Um, just listening intently. So, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um, I'm having trouble connecting to the. Internet. I don't know what you said, Todd. It looks like, it looks like you triggered that, my Alexa. Uh, <laughs> I noticed that it listens to me a lot recently. <laughs> that last episode too. That's funny. Uh, okay. I, I, I at least could turn this is what happens when you listen to your music loud when you're working yeah because then it's real loud but okay angie um again thank you thank you thank you we as i prepared i should say told you before we started the show we always like to end our show with our guests having the final say the final word uh, it could be on topic it could be off topic uh, it could be about anything angie wants it to be about so with that said, Angie, uh, what would you like to leave our community with? Well, I actually have a quote, another quote that I'm going to kind of leave everyone with. And I don't know if people are familiar with the late Randy Posh. He wrote the mm -hmm. book, The Last Lecture. Last lecture. Yeah. And so his wife, his, his um, widowed wife, Jay Posh, she wrote a book, Dream New Dreams, after he had died. And she said, one of the greatest life lessons I've learned has been to dream new dreams. When a dream is fulfilled, it shouldn't become a straitjacket, constricting a person's evolution and progress. Instead, it should be a stepping stone to the next thing. When a dream shatters, you should pick up the pieces and create a new one. It won't be the same as the broken one, but you can hope it will be as vibrant and as exciting. And I feel this quote so much. Um, when I read her book, it's, and it's with the new life that I had to create after my losses. And I had a dream and everything was perfect until it wasn't. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had to recreate, recreate something magical again. And I'm living a beautiful life right now. And so I did dream a new dream. Nice. I love That's that. Beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Um, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Miss Angie Hansen is here. Um, thank you so much for all you've said, all you've shared. I want to highlight a couple of comments um, that that I think I, I sometimes hold on to comments to the end. Sometimes I show them. But Sarah said, um, um, show, show up without fixing. Hate hearing sorry and you're so strong. I love your cards. Thank you. Um, April says, great show today. Thank you for being here. Angie. Miss um, Silent Siren also said Angie is an inspiration. inspiration. And I am <laughs> and I, an inspiration too. <laughs> we, we all are. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Carla says, thank you, Angie. These resources are much needed. Um, there are many more comments throughout the show, um, but Angie... I, every now and then I like to show some of the, the comments just to show your love and appreciation from our community. Okay. Thank you for being here. You are welcome anytime when that second book is coming out, please make sure to reach out to us. Um, yeah. However we can be of support. We are here. Oh, um, yeah. Taj, anything else you want to share before we close out the show? No, I just um, definitely wish uh, your book much success. Cause Thank I know you. that's exciting in that way. Um, and yeah, definitely look into that children's book as well. Thank you so That's much. You're gonna do. Yeah. There, there's real quick. There's a couple of things I, I forgot to uh, mention. Is, is this your personal Instagram or is this for the cards? That's for, yeah, but I, that's where I usually generally do everything okay. Butterf at butterflies and halos. So you can also go follow Angie to see, stay connected with her. It's at butterflies and halos. Um, Facebook looks like it's the same butterflies yeah. and halo, um, and Etsy. I don't think I've ever been on an Etsy <laughs> site, but for those who love Etsy butterflies and halo, um, again, 
there's a there's also an Instagram for the podcast, Lost the Light Podcast. Make sure to check it out on all the streaming platforms. And then, of course, the book. Uh, we have chapters of the resilient heart. Is that right? This is off chapters the chapters of, a of, of a resilient heart. Yep. Okay. Um, make sure you guys check that out. Go pre-order it. It comes out next month. Let's support Angie. And uh, that's it. <laughs> All right. Um, Taj, that's it. Yes. Okay. Angie, that's it. Anything All else? Right. No, thank you guys so, so much. You are more than welcome, Angie. And to everyone watching, thank you all so much. To everyone <laughs> listening, thank you very much. We will see you all next Wednesday at 1 p.m. Adios, everyone.